Roger Federer. So this is a video that's really on the fly. As you can see, I'm in a car. <laughs> but, um, you know, I wonder if you've acknowledged, like, how great a job you've done over the last two weeks, you know? And it's a lot to, um, it's a big feat to be able to compete at Madrid and win that and also just go from there um, after, after six weeks of kind of being off from tennis, go to that, win that, that, that match, uh, that tournament at Madrid, and then go on to Rome. I, I imagine, like, the traveling and everything has just been really, you know, tiring. So I can totally understand, like, where you are coming from. And I just wonder, like, have you taken a moment just to even acknowledge, you know, okay, you made an exit out of Rome, but... You know, what about the amazing job that you did? Like, how consistent you still are being and, um, you know, um, and still really writing a very unique history in um, tennis, as far as I know, you know, just even traveling you know, with your family and everything. I haven't seen many people do that. And I know that traveling on tour, I could just imagine, like, um, how tough that could be. So, you know, I I just really, as you go on and just rest yourself a little bit and go into Roland Garros, like, to also just take a tally of the victory um, over even, like, all the small things that add up to the big things of being able to compete and win at Madrid, being able to compete and go really deep into the tournament at Rome. So, you know, if you haven't taken a moment to acknowledge that, um you know, just please do. Um, yeah, let's have a moment of silence for that. Okay. <laughs> so now that you have acknowledged that, that that's awesome, you know, and you're winning, you know what I mean? This is just one battle in the war. You know, this is one chapter in the entire book, in the entire uh, saga, whatever you want to call it. It's just one chapter going to Rome. And I think is, I think, I think Rome was actually, um, just such a, an unbelievable benefit to you because I feel like from what I've read is that it brought to light exactly what you are valuing personally at this point in your life like who Roger Federer what Roger Federer what's important to Roger Federer in his own uh life as an individual and tennis and um you know I read an article on ESPN yesterday and I just want to bring to light to you as well like to be careful as you go into Roland Garros like because you didn't win the tournament with Djokovic um not to sort of let that affect you mentally but just to sort of understand like even reading this article in uh, ESPN and you know what maybe I'll link it so that if you are watching this video you could just click on the link and sort of see what I'm talking about so I read the article and in the article it's an interview with you and the interview with Djokovic and just notice like the difference in the energy like for Djokovic, it was, I knew I had to be, you know, it's kind of this energy, you know, and a mental frame that you could feel from him. Like, I knew I had to be very prepared for this. I had to be determined. I had to be focused. Like, all you get from him in that article is just focus. If you are not able to take anything else away from where Djokovic was, you know, mentally and what his intentions were uh, to go into the match against you, Federer... Um, you get that he was really, like, very serious about being very focused. And what I get from that article, even a couple of just sentences, is that he knows that he cannot, just like what I was saying in the last video, like, letting people off the hook. Like, he knows he had to have every single I dotted and T crossed, as, as we say sometimes in the United States, every I dotted and every T crossed, when it comes to you, if he's going to make sure that he wants to stay at number one and um, make sure that he actually gets through people who are a huge threat like you. So um, if this is like somehow ended up being some sort of reflection on you feeling 
like a certain blockage as far as being able to beat Djokovic. I, I don't think so. I, I really read this article and I just feel like, you know what? It's all about the focus. It's not about even necessarily uh, unforced errors. Um, the unforced errors that you had or whatever were probably because I feel that your focus was on um, sort of elsewhere. And, and that's not to say that that's invalid. And I, I definitely, definitely want to get across in this video by me saying your focus is somewhere else, that it's not a criticism or I'm not saying that you know, tennis is more important than any other area in your life. But what I saw in this article was that you really have a value for family and that, you know, and I have totally, totally and deeply and highly respect that um, about you. But I just want to also bring that up in this video that, that um, if it is going to be that you want to try to take number one in the world, you can do it. Like, it's not even necessarily about the the physical ability because you have the ability. And even Djokovic knows this. Like, you know, just think about what, he, what I was saying a moment ago. He said, I had to be extremely focused. Like, I cannot sleep at the wheel for one moment playing Federer. Like, I had, knew I had to go into this match super focused. That's what I had to commit to. And I really respect him. And, I, I mean, any athlete can respect another athlete even just saying that because you know what it is, you know, to, to really be focused. You know what you know what it's all about. But um, that's where he was. Whereas where, where you were was that you came off this whole thing with Madrid and this whole new run. And, you know, after six weeks of, of um, you know, just being able to sort of um, have, have a little bit of time maybe to yourself and to your family, which you, I don't even know, like, really what your schedule is like. But, I mean, do you even get six weeks of time with your family? Like, do you even get that much time with your family so that might have been like a wonderful time for you as well and I can imagine like having that warmth of being around your your children having a moment to really be around your children get to know even more of who they are and see them you know um who they are in, in unfold in front of your eyes just a little more than than what you normally do because I feel like do you even get six weeks off in the year you know I mean I think there's that time in December or whatever like maybe you guys get like four four or five weeks off I'm not sure but um anyway so I was just reading the rest of the article and I just saw something where you said you know I am excuse me you said I am uh it's all right because I was tired anyway, and um, it was something to the effect of, you know, and these night matches. Like, I really like to put my daughters to bed at night, and that was just so sweet. That was just so beautiful. Really, really beautiful to hear something like that. And I really feel, you know, for you, and I just want you to know that I root for you to win, and I root for you to be able to win with your family, like being able to have what you need um, as far as just just the way any normal parent will want to be like present for their family at night or, or whatever. Like I really root so much for you, Roger, to like really be able to get number one and be able to do what you need to do with your family. But I just want to pose to you as well, like maybe... You know, and I don't know, I could be wrong because I don't know you, but I just really felt like it seemed like, you know, your priority, which which is not saying it's a bad thing, but it's really, really like family is very, very important. And as you really decide whether or not, like how you're going to approach Roland Garros or, or, or Wimbledon or the Olympics or just whatever your your tennis the rest of your tennis career is going to be um is it really going to be like is it really going to be worth you know or how are you going to work and get what you need with your family which includes I'm sure you know like making sure your family has a good dosage of of your presence as well like I could just imagine 
you know, sort of being on the court like, oh my God, you know, this is like the ninth day and yeah, you know, I'm like happy to be here and I want to win and stuff, but like I'm putting my daughters to bed in eight days, you know, like, and it's really not, I really say this respectfully not to be like, I know your life or I'm trying to like, you know, talk about your personal life like I know it or something, but um, I just say it respectfully, just try in the in the spirit of just knowing that I support you and I'm rooting for you to like, you know, be able to, to do all you need to do and, and, and have a, and win in the area of your family and win in the area of tennis if you need to. And also just know that if, if winning in the area of your, you know, whatever way, I'll just put it like whatever way you decide is most important to whatever's whatever is in Rogers Federer's life that I as a fan still support you and what you do and you know um winning every single title isn't um doesn't take away from the fact of 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 how much of a sportsman and a super person that you are and um also just I really respect you like as a um you know, in in the in the, the form of not only a tennis player, but what I know of you as a husband, and what I know of you in uh, as a father, and what I know of you as a humanitarian as well. So, you know, I support you in trying to be able to figure those things out because I I figure out what's what's right for you, and I I really look forward to seeing how that will unfold, and I'm good with however you choose individually you know, to, to, um, make every single thing work for you so that, that your family is winning and that your tennis is wherever you want and need it to be. And that I, I I personally hope that you're able to, um, get everything and win in every area that you want without, without any single thing suffering, any single thing. So, um, I just made this video because I want you to know that I don't, I look at that article and I see, um, that um, there was just a difference in the focus and it, it said to me more than anything like I don't even have I feel like I don't even have to see that match to know like it was a focus versus um, it was just a focus thing you know like Djokovic was super focused you know he was super focused and he doesn't have the same family dynamics and personal life that you do but I also noticed too actually he got married so it's very interesting, like, and again, I, it's not like I know him or know his life, but just, like, for me, it seems to make sense, like, to, that he got, he actually got married last year, um, from what I understand, and, um, he got married, so that's, like, one less thing, like, he doesn't have a girlfriend, um, like, hanging about, waiting for him at 24 and 25 years old, and, like, you're on tour, you're on the tennis tour, like, and I have my own life, maybe with school and my own profession, and I can't follow you. Like, it seemed like he's, like, trying to really get serious in his very own way about what tennis is and tie up any loose ends. So, for me, it seems like, and I could be totally wrong, but he got married and, um, you know, I don't know if his wife, uh, I think his wife's named Helena. I don't know if she travels with him all the time, but I do see her at the matches, so I imagine she travels with him a lot. So I feel like he's sort of tied up that area of his life. He, you know, made a commitment with his diet, you know. So there is a little bit of a theme with Joker, you know. You know, you know he's a Joker, but there is a theme with him that he is trying to really commit to focus and trying to actually eliminate anything that would sort of fragment his focus on the court and that's where I turn back to you and just see like if I, I you know as a parent have been away from my children for like 10 nights like I would start to begin to feel like the court was being on court yeah this is great and all but it's kind of a drag like it's like another night I'm, I'm ha you know I would feel like this I kind of happy to play tennis I'm happy to win but it's kind of drag like I can't even put my kids to bed you know me uh, you know, I, I can't even say, like, how I would even deal with that, um, you know, maybe I, I probably would, like, depending on where I was going with my career, if I were a tennis player, maybe I would do something, like, make a video to my kids, like, saying goodnight, or have a video of them, like, 
when times get really rough, you have to do like weird things. So I probably might do something like that. And I feel like if I did something like that where my kids were maybe watching a video of me saying goodnight and sleep tight or singing, you know, like singing them or do, doing whatever the family routine is, is that um, I would um, I would feel a little more at rest stepping onto the court. But I don't know, you know, again, I just say with the highest respect that I don't claim to like know your life or try to like advise you on your life but I'm just rooting for you and I just support you and I really really believe in you as a tennis player and I love the example that you've set not only on the tennis court but truthfully like in your relationship you know just seeing a healthy relationship in the family's a healthy family support system just you know from an outside point of view so you know, I really support you on that, and the people who have followed you for years, like, hear that in an article, and they feel for you as, as like, a, a family person, you know, sort of missing out on your girls, you know, at night and stuff like that, and um, I just hope that commenting on this doesn't seem, like, intrusive or um, not condescending, but sort of like know-it-all or anything like that, but just coming from a more respectful way that I really see, you know, I, I really see and respect where you're coming from on that. And I, I root for you to be able to get to a situation where you could win, where your family could win, and you could... I'm not talking about win a tennis match, and I'm just talking about have success in a system that... Um, a system where you're getting what you need you feel like you're present for your family in the proper way whatever that way is for you personally and then also so that you can continue to um play tennis and the tennis is secondary you know and I, I'm a fan of yours and I still support and respect whatever you decide to do and then no matter what um um you know I'm still proud of you, Roger Federer, as a fan. You know, how far you got in Rome and how hard you've been trying and doing things. And for me, I think no fan could ever ask for more than um, someone just doing their best, getting out on the court and doing their best, you know. And, um, you know, so good luck going into Roland Garros. I really believe, you know, however you decide to do it, you can absolutely do it. I just think it's all about really figuring out where you are um, letting yourself off the hook with certain things. And um, I think uh, the certain things might be, are you watching the matches that you've lost? Like, have you? I heard you say a couple years back, like, you don't watch the matches you lost. And I was, like, really surprised about that. And um, I totally get not wanting to watch the match, but I don't know, like, do you ever see yourself play from more of the bird's eye view on, you know, on TV? Because I, I personally feel like if you saw yourself play the matches that you lost, and I could be totally wrong, I could be totally wrong on this, but I feel that if you saw yourself play the matches that you, you haven't won, that you would see that you actually weren't playing so bad. Like, you'd be able to see where you could tweak decisions, where sometimes you came to net maybe a little early, or, you know, that you actually had the ability to just make it work. But if you're just on the court playing in it, and then hearing the media talk about, you know, you not being able to, to win as much and this and that, like, I think really seeing your matches... You know, and before you open the match, like just really clearing yourself and, 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 you know, before you look at a match that you lost, if you have any emotional connections to it, just really sorting yourself out before you watch that mass, match. And also prepare a little something so that you can sort yourself out emotionally after you watch the match, if there's any emotional effect afterward, so that you could just bounce back. But I do believe that if you. Don't let yourself off the hook if you have not been looking at the matches you lost. There's so much juice and there's so much there's so much there for you to just see that you're actually doing a great job but this you know and that the tweaks or whatever that you can make are probably really, really doable. And that's just my opinion. You know, it's just just my opinion. Um 
and uh, just what I believe. So, so um, I wish you well. I wanted to make this quick video. It's it's 20 minutes long, but that's the passion I have in supporting Roger Federer. So keep it up. Good luck at Roland Garros. I'm gonna, still gonna try to um, make maybe that management video I was talking about. But then I read this article about about you know you and your family, and so I just kind of had like second sort of second thoughts about the approach or if I should do it um but you know again this is fun for me and thank you so much and good luck for you and I'm totally totally you know sending you out some you know just like a energetic support for you and the Federer family respect to you and respect to the Federer family and take care and keep pressing along and just do what's right for you and whatever is right for you you know as a fan I will support you and be behind you, Roger Federer, 100% of the way. <laughs> Talk to you later. Good luck. Bon chance.